Good morning and welcome. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. During the season of Epiphany, we've seen the manifestations, the showing of God's grace through the miracles of Jesus. We've also seen the fact that Jesus is shown to us not only as a true man, but also as true God. Today, as we continue in the season of Epiphany, once again, we see the light of the love of God in the face of Christ. Let's begin our worship with the singing of our first hymn, hymn number 84. We follow the order of worship, the service of word and sacrament. It is on page 26 in the very front of your hymnal. We also welcome those who may be worshiping with us from afar, those in Sitcon, Petersburg, Cordova, Kodiak, Prudhoe Bay, Tuluxic, and Bethel, Alaska, Diamond Bar, California, Atoko, Oklahoma, Rodeo, Los Alamos, and Silver City, New Mexico, Lagodi, Indiana, Raymond, Mississippi, Winfield, and Concordia, Kansas, welcome. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into His presence and worship Him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask Him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful 
and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Lord of Lord, how glorious is Let us pray. Lord God, you know that we are surrounded by many dangers and that we often stumble and fall. Strengthen us in body and mind and bring us safely through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the scripture readings. Our Old Testament reading for this, the fourth Sunday of Epiphany, is recorded in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, beginning with the 15th verse. Near Moses reminds the people that even though he was a great prophet, there would be a prophet that God would send who would fulfill all of the things that God had promised. And he speaks of Jesus, the Jesus that we know. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see His great fire anymore, or we will die. 
the Lord said to me, What they say is good, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. If anyone does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded him to say, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, must be put to death. Here ends our Old Testament reading. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 1. It's on page 64 in the very front of the hymnal. And we will sing the psalm together. Psalm 1 on page 64. Our second lesson for this morning is recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, beginning with the first verse. This section is actually talking about something that God neither commands nor forbids. One of the problems that the early Christians in the city of Corinth had to deal with was the fact that every day when they walked through the streets, they walked past the butcher shops, and the butcher shops always got their meat from those churches that offered them as sacrifices to gods and goddesses, false gods and goddesses. And sometimes the conscience, if they, the conscience was troubled if they visited someone who happened to be eating meat. Meat they knew was sacrificed to an idol. Well, God didn't command or forbid them to eat the meat that was offered to idols. But God wanted His people to be be very careful about hurting the consciences of those people who thought it was wrong. Listen to the words and how the Apostle Paul describes this. Now about food sacrificed to idols. We know that we all possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. The man who thinks he knows something does not yet know as he ought to know. But the man who loves God is known by God. So then about eating food sacrificed to idols. 
We know that an idol is nothing at all in the world and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things come, came, and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. But not everyone knows this. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat such food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to an idol. And since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. But food does not bring us near to God. We are no worse if we do not eat and no better if we do. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your freedom does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone with a weak conscience sees you who have this knowledge eating in an idol's temple, won't he be emboldened to eat what has been sacrificed to idols? So this weak brother for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against your brothers in this way, and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause him to fall. Here ends our second lesson. Hallelujah! The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has anointed me to preach good news. Hallelujah! 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 for the Lord's Gospel. Please rise. The Holy Gospel is recorded in the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning with the 21st verse. This is also our sermon text for this morning. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at His teaching, because He taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits, and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. This is God's Word. Please be seated. We continue with the singing of our second hymn, hymn number 304.
Grace, pardon, and everlasting life are yours. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our meditation is taken from our gospel reading, Mark chapter 1, beginning with the 21st verse. And I invite you to follow along in the back side of your service folder. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching, and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits, and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. This is God's word. We bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, open our hearts, open our ears, help us to hear and take to heart the words that you have spoken, strengthen the faith in our hearts and in our lives. For Jesus' sake we ask this, amen. Dear friends, who do we listen to? But we listen to our parents, maybe grandparents, I hope. When we were growing up, there was no doubt when we heard certain voices, we listened. We followed what they had to say. Maybe as we grow older, though, we become a little more discerning. We don't always listen to everything we hear. What is it that causes us to listen or to read, to understand from some people and not from others? Well, it might be a political stance that causes us to listen to some and not to others. It might, because, might be because that person or that publication may be a publication that is not necessarily known to always tell the truth. That may be the reason why we might listen or read a trusted publication instead of, say, for example, one of those supermarket tabloids that we see when we're standing in line at, at the supermarket. Who do we listen to? And why do we listen to? Why do we choose one television station or website or magazine or another? I think a lot has to do with the trust that we put in to what that particular television station or website or periodical has to say. Why did people listen to Jesus? I think there's a lot of reasons, and today as we look into God's Word for today, we even hear a man who was possessed that stands up and speaks about Jesus. Why do we listen to Jesus? A classmate of mine who is a chaplain in the prison back in Wisconsin wrote recently about a, a, a program that he is instituting in that particular prison. He wrote these words, he said, we have we, as chaplains, have great life-giving and life-changing truths to share with the people we visit in prison. But then we walk back out the gates and the people we minister to remain behind. And the world they remain in is a foreign world with rules, values, and dynamics that are dramatically different from the world outside the wires. We can help them understand the gospel, but how much can we do to help them apply the gospel to situations they encounter? Like having a cellmate possessing contraband, or having malicious 
and dishonest guard in charge of your work unit. What if we could train people who live in these circumstances to minister to other people in the same circumstances? I think Chaplain Merton has a lot to say to us today. A lot to say to us today that is reflected in the scriptures that we see in front of us. Why did people want to listen to Jesus? On that Sabbath day, it wasn't an uncommon Sabbath day. It was just a normal Sabbath day. But something uncommon happened. Jesus had just recently called His disciples, His twelve disciples, And he was visiting Capernaum, which is up in Galilee. In fact, it's on the Sea of Galilee. And on a Saturday morning when they were going to church, just like we go to church on a Sunday morning, he was asked to stand up and teach. That's a little bit different than the way we do it as a congregation. But they read the Scriptures just like we do. They sang hymns just like we do. They chanted the psalm. When it came to the teaching, sometimes they asked someone else to stand up and to share a message. Why would they want to listen to Jesus? I don't think he had to pull out any kind of credentials. He didn't have to open up his wallet and say, See, here, I'm able to do this. He didn't have a diploma on the wall. But what did Jesus have? How did these people know that he was someone they wanted to listen to? I believe it was because they had heard him before. Even though it was early in his ministry, they had heard him before. They had heard of the wonderful things that he had done up to this point in time. And he was so different than the religious authorities of that day. There's no doubt that the scribes and the Pharisees, the rabbis of Jesus' time, taught the traditions of the elders. They knew exactly what the law said, and in fact, they knew the interpretations of those laws as to how those laws were to be applied in people's lives. To the point that when it talks about a Sabbath day's walk, they knew exactly how many steps it was. And for many of them, the law became everything that they taught. And that caused a problem because now no longer were the rabbis, the the scribes, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, no longer were they, in a sense, living with the people. They had put themselves on a pedestal above the people. They were more than just an example Because most people realize they could not uphold the teachings of the law like the rabbis. But Jesus was different. When Jesus came, his message was different. It's almost as if if the Old Testament prophet, priest, priest, and king that are spoken of and that we heard in our Old Testament reading from the book of Deuteronomy today. It's almost as if those prophecies were coming true at the time of Christ, and indeed they did. Jesus came as one who embodied those promises, now fulfilled. But when He spoke to the people, it was so different. He presented matters of great significance like life and death and eternity And he was a breath of fresh air, especially as he spoke with the love that he showed for the people that he lived among. There was no doubt people wanted to hear what Jesus had to say because he was different. And we have to say, because we have the New Testament eyes that our God has given to us, we realize that Jesus not only was the fulfillment of those prophecies, but He knew the will of the Father from before eternity. He knew what was going to happen. 
he could look as he stood in the front of the synagogue, he could look out and he could tell the difficulties that every person in that synagogue was dealing with. And the love that he had for them was something that beamed from his face, that was spoken in his words, that was felt in his heart, that was shown in the actions that he had. And people wanted to listen to him. People wanted to listen to Jesus and hear his words. Who is it that we want to hear speaking to us? Who is it that we listen to? I'm certain that we have our friends who, whom we trust and we're willing to share our lives with in many respects and, and have them respond to us and speak to us. And those who are our friends very often end up becoming our critics. They look at our work and we allow them to criticize it. They may hear about the sports teams that we like, and they may be very critical of the choices that we make, and we listen to them. They may be fashion critics when it comes to what we wear. We may listen to their choices as to what we can wear that makes us look better. And finally, they may be very critical of our actions. And this may be a way that those that we love are showing their love to us when they feel brave enough to tell us where we've walked off the path. Then why are we sometimes afraid to hear what God has to say when we're willing to listen to those who are around us? Is it because we may not like what we hear? God in His Word tells us that all Scripture was given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and instruction in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly prepared for every good work. And everything that was written before was written for our learning. Our rationale for not listening to Him might be, God might not like that, but my friends don't mind. Does our Bible suffer because of neglect? Why is it that we don't always want to listen to what our God has to say? Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey what I command. There might be a hesitation for us on the second part of that, we may say, yes, I do love you, Jesus, but maybe I don't want to know what you have to say because then I would have to obey it. But what does the Word of God do? There's a word in the Hebrew, kadash. It's a word that means holy. And the picture there is actually a picture that comes from a butcher shop. Kadash is not only the, the meat cleaver that comes down, but it is also the sound that is made when that meat cleaver cuts the meat in two. Kadash, God says. And isn't that what the Word of God does? It cuts our heart in two. It lays bare for God to see everything that is in there. And the Word of God does reveal to us that indeed we are not up to His standards. That the only way that we can be kadash is because of what Jesus has done for us and continues to do for us. It's the Word of God that is reliable, that is there to lead us. It is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. It's also the place to go for forgiveness when we fail to trust or believe or follow what God's will is. And God applies His forgiveness with His Word because Jesus has won that forgiveness. You know, probably the best headline that we could ever read comes from one of our hymn writers 
who wrote, Chief of sinners though I be, Jesus shed His blood for me. So our Jesus wants us to listen to Him. But He also wants us to be lifted up and encouraged today as we're reminded in this section from God's Word that that here we have Jesus who comes into a synagogue and the devil is right there. And Jesus is able to kick the devil out. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. I think this is the first instance of demon possession in the book of Mark. And if we read the Gospels, we'll realize that it happened quite a number of times when Jesus was walking this earth. And I think there's a good reason for that. I think the devil realized this is the last shot that he has to try to tempt Jesus, to try to make Jesus look like he was weak. The reason that Jesus steps up to the plate on this one, because who would really value what someone who is demon-possessed says? If it was the devil that was speaking, would we want to listen? Even though the devil is the father of lies, the devil sometimes does speak truth. The demons all knew Jesus when they saw Him, and Jesus did battle with them every day. The devil's play was to discredit Jesus. And the devil wasn't a credible witness. And so Jesus takes care of it by casting the devil out. Now, obviously, the devil is still around us today. And he is still there tempting us. And again and again, we need to go back to the Word of God to fight him with the Word of God. In the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul talks about the armor of God. And one piece of armor that he speaks of is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That sword is a double-edged blade. It can cut us, but it can also cut the devil and knock the devil down. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this, a new teaching and with authority? He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. We look at the reaction of the people and it really is an eye-opener. They were amazed by what they had heard and seen. What is this, they said. A new teaching and with authority. They'd witnessed something they had never, ever seen before. The casting out of evil spirits. And the news spread quickly. But that was nothing compared to the miracles that they would see. The things that they would hear that would come from the mouth of Jesus. You know, even today, people talk, especially when they witness something incredible. And maybe you have heard people who are so excited because of something that they witnessed and you can't stop them from talking about it. Whether they were there when a rocket blasted off down in Cape Canaveral, whether they were there when something terrible like the Twin Towers went down, they can't ever, ever forget the images that they saw or whether they were there at the birth of a child. And what they witnessed caused them to be so overwhelmed with the love of God that they couldn't help but speak about what they had seen and what they had heard. I suppose probably the biggest proponent here, the one who spoke the loudest and spoke the longest, was the man who had been healed. The man who had been suffering with that the demon that had possessed him. And now no longer did he have that demon in him. I am 
I'm sure that he was probably the one who went and spoke about it to everyone he knew and even to strangers that he never knew. What about the news that we have? You know, the holiday season is over. We've, we've stepped across into the month of February. And the holidays seem so, so long ago. But not so the message. The message of a Savior born. The words of the angels that remind us not only will you, you will give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins, but also the angel of the, or the message of the angels as they were speaking with the shepherds. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. You know, it's kind of amazing the way that God works. Because if someone would have said, that God was going to come to this earth and He was going to speak to us, who would listen? But when God sent His Son into the world, He didn't send Him as a conquering king. He sent Him as a little baby in a manger. Someone that would grow up and would be just like us as human beings. Someone who could understand the problems that we have in our hearts and in our lives. Someone who would be tempted just as we are and yet would be without sin. And someone who would be able to talk with us because he understands us. Now, Chaplain Merton has a good plan. Who better to have speaking with inmates in a prison than an inmate himself? Who better to have someone speaking to us than our Savior who is with us? But you know, He has broken the bonds, the chains of slavery that we are in. He's flung open the doors of our prisons, the prison of sin. And yet, because He lived with us, we can listen to Him and trust His words. Let's share the good news that God has given to us. Even though it's not Christmas anymore, there's still a wonderful message for us to speak. A message of forgiveness. A message of new life in Christ. Tomorrow is another day. But it is another day that Jesus walks with us and counsels with us from His Word. And so take that Word this new month and use it. If you haven't begun a reading program for the new year in the Scriptures, we can include it and start today. Let the words of our God lead us. I think that probably a better headline for us today is Life with Jesus. Life with Jesus for all. Let's share that good news because life does have a better headline and it is life with Jesus for all. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess the faith that God has given us according to the words of the Nicene Creed on page 31. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please be seated. We continue our worship as we bring our offerings to the Lord. Please rise for prayer. We pray the responsive prayer of the church on page 32, responsive prayer of the church. Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand, the beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good of work and the gift of rest, the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your Son's body and blood, which you give us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Strengthen us through this heavenly food. Increase our trust in Christ and our love for one another. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace. Move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering, and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Move us to pray for those in need, and to help them with deeds of kindness. We offer special prayers of thanksgiving this morning, as uh, Pastor Ewing, Chris Ewing and his wife, uh, we're blessed with the gift of a healthy baby this past week. And uh, also, um, Pastor Jason Strong and his wife up in Fairbanks um, were the recipients of uh, an adopted, uh, adopted child, um, brand new babies. So let's pray. Lord of life, we marvel again at the wonderful way in which you bring children into the world. Accept our thanks for holding your protecting hand over these mothers in childbirth and for bringing joy to these parents with the gifts of children. Bless these children, receive them into your family through the sacrament of baptism and protect them from every danger of body and soul. Give their parents the love, wisdom, and means to care for their children 
that you have entrusted to them. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the friend of children. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. In the past, He spoke to us through the prophets, but in these last days He has spoken to us by His Son, who is the radiance of His glory. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. You are my God and I will exalt you. I will give Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me then he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Please be seated. We will commune approximately six to eight at each table. Our second table is reserved for those who are worshiping with us from afar. I would ask that you please follow the directions of our ushers. Thank you.
And for those who are worshiping with us from afar, take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for your sin. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of your sin. And now may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen.
Please rise, we sing Thank the Lord on page 36. the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated for our final hymn. Hymn number 451. Good morning to everyone this morning. Special welcome to our newcomers, visitors. We're happy to have you worshiping with us, and we invite you to share a cup of coffee and some refreshments immediately following the service downstairs. And if you haven't as yet signed our guest book, uh, please do so before you leave. A couple of announcements. Uh, looking into the uh, service folder at the uh, church calendar, uh, Wednesday evening, no Bible study, church council meeting on Thursday evening.